everyone, so this video I'm going to be doing a uh, painting, probably watercolor. I'll see what happens. It usually ends up being a little bit of everything, but with watercolor as a base. Um, I just want to take you through my sketching process and show you what I went through to try to decide what to do. So here's a page of thumbnails. Some of these I might do later. Um, some of them I decided are too complicated or too simple or aren't what I want to do, but these are some sketches I came up with. I like to star the ones that I find interesting. And then I ultimately decided to do this fun little cat character, and he has a bunch of like bags on him. He has a little hat, a little bird, um, sleeping on his head, and just like a nice simple um, negative space around him with someone brushing his fur. Um, so he's just kind of like relaxing on a sunny hill. That's kind of what I decided to do. Um, and I did a little bit of uh, color study underneath. That might change, but I want to fix the drawing first. Um, and this is going to be a 5x7 print, but I'm probably... I don't know if I want to paint it at 5x7 or if I want to make it a little bit bigger and then have it scaled down. That's probably what I'll do. Things look a little bit better when you scale them down, so it'll probably be... A little bit bigger than 5 by 7 I'm actually gonna fix the sketch digitally I decided I'm I'm going to um, it's not resolved enough for me to like take it to tracing paper and I'm just I kind of feel like using digital right now sometimes I don't and that's why I do the tracing paper but right now it seems kind of appealing to me so I'm going to use um, this brush which is like a 6b pencil brush but it's been modified, I think. I don't really know anymore which brushes came with it and which ones didn't. I've been liking more line art heavy stuff lately, um, so I might try to incorporate some of that. I need to learn to follow the lines and not try to redraw them the way I think it'll look better, because usually if I like a sketch, I like it for a reason, and if I try to change many things, I'm not going to like it anymore. So I'm just transferring the sketch to my watercolor paper. I use the uh, Arch or Arches um, hot press paper. I really like it. It works with everything I use. This is what my sketch ended up being. It's gonna be kind of cropped like this. I made it a little bit bigger so that when I uh, scan it in, I can shrink it down and make it fit onto the five by seven. I'm using a brown a terracotta terracotta Prismacolor color race for the sketch or lines, I guess you could call it. Also, this is going to be um, the postcard print for my uh, patrons on Patreon. So if you want to grab this as a print, um, the last chance to do it is um, before May. So as long as you, if you want this, you just need to pledge to my Patreon for the, um, for the Greyhound tier, and then you'll get this as a print. You'll get a, a handful of stickers I think it's like three or four stickers and then a mystery item so if you want to get this as a print that's the only way to do it. So anyone who pledges before the 1st of May will get this sent to them. It kind of looks more like a dog than a cat but I'm not really too worried about the animal breed I just want it to be a big fluffy creature. I forgot about lining with um, my uh, terracotta color. I used to use this all the time and I love it. It's such a nice um, color. It's not too dark, so, and it kind of dissolves a little bit with the watercolor, so um, you can change the lines afterwards if, if the paint decides to go in a different direction. Um, they're easy to cover up, so, and they're erasable a little bit, kind of. They don't really erase that good, the color race, but they erase better than a normal color pencil, I guess. I'm gonna have to tape around the edges of the paper and then tape the edges of the illustration. Okay, so I have my sketch here and I have my color study. 
It's always important to have color studies or else you won't know what you're doing and it could turn out a mess. So I like to wet the paper a little bit before I start watercolor. I use a big brush and I try to just get it nice and wet, but not too much water. Um, it just depends on how I want to paint that day and today I'm feeling like doing a bit of wet on wet. Um, some days I don't really do it like this, but I really want to try today because it's very relaxing and I've been very stressed lately. But all of my stress is now gone because um, I was stressed about my driving test and I passed and I don't have to do any more tests ever for driving, which is a huge weight off my shoulders. And now I can just focus on everything I want to focus on. And it's just really, really good feeling. So I'm excited to just paint today. And then there's some birds outside. It's spring. It's nice, fresh, rainy weather. Um, it's not really the gloomy kind of rain because it's actually nice weather. So that's good. I like to have a test sheet. Okay, I want him to be nice and orange. It's almost like a corgi patterning, but on a cat. I love painting with orange watercolor. It's one of my favorite things. I try not to worry too much about where the color is going. I need to be careful because I want the background to be blue because um, of the sky. I want to do this nice teal, um, not quite realistic blue color, like more of a, um, I don't know how to describe it, but not like a real sky blue. I want it to be like a teal sky. And that will mix with the orange and make everything muddy. So I need to make sure that the orange is completely dry before I do the background. It'd be nice if I masked off the cat before, but I don't know. I didn't think of that. <laughs> Wet watercolor paper has a very distinct smell to it that I didn't notice before now. But it definitely does have one. <laughs> I think I'm going to bring this down to her pants also, but her pants are going to be darker. I'm going to put another layer of color on her pants. Might be fun to drop in some colors on here, so it's kind of like a patterny. I don't know if this is going to end up looking horrible, but I think it might be interesting. Do the rocks in the foreground, which are going to be this nice dark teal color sometimes dry brushing watercolor can be nice after that silhouette dries i'll put in the shadows Should be using my watercolor brush for this, not my non-watercolor brush. grass turned out a little bit more brown than I wanted, but I think it gives a nice spring sort of feel because the grass is always kind of like a mix of green and, and brown in the spring, and that's kind of where what it is right now. That's why I've been wanting to paint like flowers and stuff lately. There's so many birds outside, it's so nice. It sounds like they might be fighting over something. <laughs> Some seed. Okay, I'm going to try to wet the paper before I do the blue, so I don't get any harsh edges. I hope this dries at a color that I want.
darker though. I'm going to go back in with some pencil and bring out the details and then after that I will know where I want to add more paint. You know when you're coloring and you turn off your line art layer that's kind of what it looks like right now and it always goes through that stage of um, oh this looks not that good but then once you add the lines it's a lot better. Um, this is my tiniest pencil. I wish I had another one of these but I don't. Oh my gosh. I just found my watercolor brush. This is the one I lost. I think something about watercolor I've kind of learned to do more is to let the natural look of it show through um, and also get better at creating an appealing natural look, I guess. Um, and I've been better with patience and I guess a look kind of with patience. This looks so similar to a drawing I did before. This one. This is a print. It's a little bit too dark, but um, it's, it's a bit similar, <laughs> but that's okay. I don't really care about that. There's so much nature today. Even though it's rainy, the animals don't care. They like the rain. Been trying to embrace line work a bit more because for some reason I got it in my head that relying on line work is bad, but it's not. It's not like that doesn't matter. It's like drawing is lines. Like you don't have to have a lineless style to be a good artist. That's just a style. So I've been adding, uh, embracing lines more. I might crop this a little bit um, once I decide like where the best crop will be for the 5x7 because there's a bit of dead space but negative space is a good thing I need to learn that it's okay to have negative space because I always feel like you gotta fill the page up with stuff but you don't have to some of the most effective illustrations have huge blank areas and you don't even notice you don't even register it as something with a lot of negative space because it just works so that's something else I've been trying to keep in mind. Yeah, I need some darker values. These bags need some darker shadows on the side. So here's the finished result. I definitely overworked some areas, but um, I'm overall happy with it. I had a lot of fun with the colors and the textures of the watercolor. And if you want to grab a print of this, um, you just need to pledge to my Patreon before the 1st of May because this is going to be sent out to all the Greyhound Patreons, and it includes a bunch of other stuff too. So a link to that will be in my description. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.